Hello, the practitioner here. Bachelor of Science student, chemistry major, mathematics minor, uh, magician, and parapsych researcher. Um, I've done a little bit of looking at your current video here, and I have to admit that that ain't bad. That ain't half bad. You know, um, I told one other guy that I thought that he had a um, pretty good telekinesis video, and I thought of a couple of ways he could have cheated on it, and so I wanted to uh, see him remove it. Um, Yours, on the other hand, I've actually looked for all the telltale signs which I started poking at at the various videos. Uh, loops, um, the like. The thing is that there were a couple of things which I noticed which um, I did find interesting. One of which was the fact that you actually, uh, that um, you were, the camera was moving, and despite the fact that the, the, mag, that the uh, spoon was bouncing, there were two things which uh, were telltale signs for me. One of which was that the spoon was bouncing up off the table. Now, the thing is, if there were a magnet that had done that, uh, close magnet, I've actually done tricks with magnets before, and it's very, very difficult to control. But here's the interesting thing. Um, somebody suggested two magnets, one uh, on top and one under the bottom. Well, the problem is you might not necessarily get uh, the magnets, if the magnets were of equal force, you would have, um, if the magnets were of equal force, uh, then you'd still have, um, you wouldn't have them bouncing, you'd have them normal. If you had one more powerful, it would still hyper attract the, uh, it would actually attract the spoon uh, directly to the magnet and the magnet would come into view. Um, the, so that led me to the suspicion of invisible thread. Um, let me put it this way. Uh, invisible thread in your case, um, in, in either of its forms, I doubt. And there's a reason why I doubt that. Not only did you move the hand over the spoon, but the thing is you also moved your hand over the spoon while it was already levitated, which actually prevent, um, particularly near the ending, again, near the ending, uh, near the end of the handle where it came up, there, um, you moved it clean over the end, which meant that you would have accidentally pushed off any uh, invisible thread that was attached. Um, for what was moving up, um, again, that would, that would include loops. Again, it would have gone through your fingers and you would have pushed it over or something like that with, off, off with your fingertips. So here's my thing. Either you have somebody, now here's my suspicion, either you have somebody in the third end using loops because, of, oh, I just actually realized, hang on, um, okay, loop, hang on, loop, okay, yeah, you still push it, okay, yeah, with what you were doing, you still push it off, okay, so here's my suspicion, you either had somebody using invisible thread uh, as loops, which, uh, and you were very, very well controlled in getting your fingers in between, which I doubt considering exactly how close your fingers were, or, uh, and again, the fact that you also brought it over the ending uh, when it was over by the edge of the table, again, would denote that it was probably, uh, invisible thread was highly unlikely. And that would still prevent the, uh, the spoon from moving uh, when it got off the edge of the table because a magnet would have hyper-attracted it by that point. So, um, again, uh, you know, the magnet moving the end or what have you, um, you know, that would have been, it would have been quite easy for one magnet to overpower the other at that particular point. Besides, you also have to get really close with a lot of the uh, magnets like PK rings, earth magnets, and the like. You actually have to get fairly close. Um, inverse square law. So, you know, I'm not exactly one for telekinesis. I'm not going to say automatically that I think it's uh, real. But I would say that um, I'm going to have to take Ray Hyman's approach here. There's definitely something going on here. Um, from what I can tell, uh, now again... Uh, Mind Freak and the like, I would appreciate it if you guys would actually comment down here. I would appreciate it if you watch this video first, then comment down here and see if I've missed anything because, um, you know, in terms of Magnus or Invisible Thread, because, uh, uh, again, that I've, you know, that I've already commented on in my previous videos. If I missed anything here, do let me know because I'm going to, uh, again, I'd like to go um, over that. But based on my knowledge of magic and based on my knowledge of magic tricks in terms of Magnus and Invisible Thread right now, I would have to say that is the closest evidence I've seen. That's all I'm going to say. It's the closest evidence I've seen yet. Uh, the closest thing that uh, has come to actually being evidence of telekinesis right yet. You know, I've been scoring, and I should mention I've been scoring all the videos on YouTube, and practically I haven't come across anything yet. So yours may have potential to it. Um, again, well, note that I said may. Um, again, I'm still something of a skeptic, but I'd have to say that you are the... That is the closest thing I've come across to... Uh, your video is the closest thing I've come across to evidence of telekinesis so far. That's what I'll, that's all I'll say right now. The closest the closest thing to actual uh, to actual demonstrable evidence. Now, what I would like to see is, uh, nonetheless, I would like to see a replication attempt. I would like to see a 360 degree view. Um, I'd like to see you viewing the spoon, um, sound or no sound. I'd like to see you do that exact same thing again, you know, with the exact same uh, everything that you did, including moving the hand over the spoon and that sort of thing. But I want a 360 degree view of the camera. 
And the reason I'm saying this is because regardless of the fact that even though I've analyzed the footage and the fact of actually knowing about how magnets work, I consider it highly unlikely and that it might be, and that in, in your case, in your case, I might be willing to venture as far to say that telekinesis might be a more likely explanation. Nonetheless, there might be another possibility of uh, magnets or strings which I'm unaware of, and so I still want a 360 degree view nonetheless. This is, and I, uh, and I want, um, this is just to prove that there are no other people in the room. And I want you to do that 360 degree view very quickly. This meaning, thus meaning it prevents, uh, I want you to do it quickly to prevent uh, anybody from being able to dodge the view of the camera. Uh, preferably more than one camera would be a very good effect by this point. Um, again, posting multiple videos all from the, uh, of the same trick from different viewpoints just to, you know, more than one webcam basically. Um, other than that, I'd say that yours is the close, uh, from what I've worked out from having taken a look at that, I'd have to say that's the closest one I've come across to telekinesis yet uh, and having watched closely. So I might, note that I said might be willing to stretch it as far as to say that you actually have telekinetic capability or rephrase that, that in this particular case, telekinesis might be a more a simpler and more likely explanation pertaining to Occam's razor. However, nonetheless, I still want a 360 degree view and a control shot as well. Um, I want you to replicate this with uh, a 360 degree view, uh, view of camera using the exact same hand movements and everything else uh, just to verify that, um, that you're not using loops here, okay? I still want that shot. The fact, that you're, uh, the fact that your hand went out of shot multiple times means I know that your left hand is not responsible for this. And, if there were, uh, and you would have to have an accomplice to be able to pull this off either way uh, for the fact that um, your, the camera is constantly moving, which means uh, that you would not be able to control it with a magnet. You would have to move the camera in different positions in order to be able to pull that off, given the angle of the camera. So that means that's the reason I want the 360 degree shot, view shot is to make sure that you don't have an accomplice uh, in helping out with this one. Other than that, it looks good. Um, it does genuinely look good. Um, it might be telekinesis, but I want that 360 degree view shot nonetheless, just to make sure. Okay. Um, but like I said, you have uh, yours is the is the closest. So I would say, uh, if it is telekinesis, I want to see that replication. And if it isn't, uh, it's one of the best fakes I've seen yet. So um, congrats. Uh, I, I will tip my hat to you on that one. Um, Again, you've almost had me convinced, but I want to see that. I want to see the 300 a replication attempt using the exact same con everything you did exactly the same on that, just with a 360 degree uh, degree view camera shot before and after. Okay. Uh, again, I want to see that exact same replication as exactly as I saw in this video. Um, hand movements, uh, movement of the spoon, everything. I want to see that as close to or exactly as possible with a 360 degree view shot intermittently in between. Okay. This is a proof that you don't have an accomplice. Actually, no. Before and after. The reason I say before and after is because of the fact that I want to make sure that you're not trying to pull any trickery during the meantime uh, while you're in the video. Um, okay, so yeah. That pretty much takes care of that. Um, other than that, you came damn close. You came damn, clo you came damn close. But I want to see that replication nonetheless. You almost have me convinced. Keep up the good work. Toodles.